longevity supplements are supposed to be something that make you healthier and even promote longevity. But there are some popular longevity supplements that have some side effects. And in this video, I'm going to talk about what these side effects are and how you could avoid them. But do you want to slow down aging and live longer? If yes, then I'm looking for more people who want to reverse their biological clock. If you're interested, then email me the word health to info at and I'll send you the details. It's showtime. The first supplement or even pharmaceutical drug that I wanted to talk about is a metformin because I stumbled upon this paper and study that showed how metformin use in men who had diabetes was actually linked to some birth defects in their baby boys. The study pretty much looked at data from Denmark that tracked more than 1 million births. Among 1,451 babies exposed to metformin, 49.4% were male and the rate of birth defects was 5.2%. Now, of course, diabetes itself can promote birth defects, but in this particular study, they did control for it, meaning the result of the association between metformin use with aspects of birth defects wasn't confounded by diabetes alone. So diabetic fathers not taking metformin saw less chance of birth defects than the diabetic fathers who were taking metformin. But what they did find was that it only applied if you had been taking metformin within the three months before getting pregnant. So if you don't have diabetes, then it's not clear whether or not metformin will have any longevity benefits for you. But if you do have diabetes, then yes, metformin has a lot of benefits. It's just that if you're trying to get pregnant or conceive, then you should stop using the metformin at least a few months before. The next example is another diabetic drug called acarbose, which uh, works in very similar ways as metformin. It reduces glucose absorption, slows down the release of glucose into your bloodstream, and thus improves your hemoglobin A1C and blood sugar levels. But uh, the acarbose is also associated with aspects of decreased muscle mass and a decreased, let's say, strength and a decreased even VO2 max. Of course, diabetes already promotes muscle catabolism and it reduces your muscle mass alone because of many reasons. But in this study, they found that the individuals using acarbose as opposed to other diabetic drugs like insulin, metformin or sulfonylurase, the acarbose group had the lowest skeletal muscle index and the lowest hand grip strength. So it appears that acarbose has the worst side effects compared to aspects of muscle mass and muscle strength, which are quite important for longevity. So again, if you don't don't have diabetes, then I don't see a real reason why you would want to take, you know, acarbose or metformin because they have many side effects for aspects of health span and longevity that are very vital. These drugs are prescription drugs for a reason. They work the best for people who have diabetes and almost any drug, any pharmaceutical drug has some side effects. So why would you as a healthy individual who doesn't have diabetes use these pharmaceuticals to expose yourself to these side effects when there is little to nothing to gain from using these pharmaceuticals? Pharmaceuticals. It's a trap. Now, I'm not opposed to people using recreational pharmaceuticals for some health benefits or biohacking purposes. It's just that you have to be aware of the side effects and evaluate whether or not those side effects are worth it. If you don't have diabetes, then I would suggest that you use something more natural and with no side effects like berberine. Berberine has a lot of similar benefits for lowering blood sugar levels and improving cholesterol profile and lipids. But the difference is that berberine doesn't have some of the negative side effects related to VO2 max or muscle strength, granted that you use it at the right time. You see, you don't want to take berberine after lifting weights because it can inhibit some adaptations to muscle hypertrophy and muscle strength. But it's perfectly fine to take before training or on the days that you haven't lifted weights. So if you are someone who just tries to improve their blood sugar levels, who tries to improve their metabolic health and promote longevity without using pharmaceutical drugs, then berberine is a very safe alternative to metformin and acarbose. But if you are someone who has diabetes or prediabetes or your doctor prescribes you some of these drugs, then it's probably healthier that you do take metformin or a carbose because diabetes itself is much worse for you than some of the side effects that metformin has. Supplement number three is one of my favorites and actually I think one of the most effective over-the-counter longevity supplements that you could take which is N-acetylcysteine NAC. Now NAC doesn't have any serious negative side effects to your health. It can inhibit some aspects of muscle growth similar to metformin if you take it after workouts but NAC has one you know inconvenient side effect which is histamine secretion and it can inhibit histamine breakdown. So if you are someone who has some aspects of autoimmune conditions, some allergies, or they are just very sensitive to histamines, which a lot of people unfortunately are, then NAC is something that you need to be more careful with. You don't want to take NAC like every day if you suffer from some histamine reactions. And the second component 
to NAC in terms of boosting glutathione is glycine. We have dozens of human clinical trials showing that the glycine NAC combo improves hallmarks of aging. Fortunately, glycine has little to no side effects, but the one of the biggest ones has to do with headaches. It appears that people who have headaches or they suffer from a headache, then they have higher levels of uh, glutamic acid, aspartic acid, and glycine. Now, it could be that your body produces these amino acids in response to the headache. But what I've heard from many people watching these videos as well, commenting is that when they take glycine, they might get like a headache, they might get sleeping issues, or they might get some anxiety or something like that. Part of that reason might be that uh, yes, the glycine could in some way affect some people in terms of their headaches or migraines and giving them like, you know, negative symptoms in terms of that. But these people are a minority and uh, most of the people don't really get any side effects from glycine and it's perfectly safe. <laughs> Stick around. The last supplement on the list is a very potent longevity hormone, melatonin. Of course, you want to produce as much natural melatonin as possible, but supplementing melatonin can also have some longevity benefits and anti-aging benefits. You don't have to worry that melatonin supplementation inhibits your natural production of melatonin. Even doses of 50 milligrams a day hasn't been shown to inhibit natural melatonin production. However, the issue is that melatonin in large doses also is a contraceptive and in doses of 75 five milligrams, it has been used actually in the 90s as an oral contraceptive, or even like maybe even smaller milligrams, like maybe 20 or 50 milligrams, you might see some negative symptoms on your sex hormones, like it could reduce your testosterone, it could reduce your sperm count, or it could have some contraceptive effects. But if you take doses of only one, even like 10 milligrams, then you, you can't really expect any negative symptoms on your fertility on just 10 milligrams of melatonin. The other side effect of melatonin as a hormone, not just a supplement, is that it can have some insulin resistance effects. Melatonin binds to the pancreas and inhibits the release of insulin, which means that your blood sugar levels at night are less controlled than during the daytime. You can avoid it very easily by just not eating at night. You shouldn't eat at night because melatonin makes you somewhat insulin resistant. But taking large amounts of melatonin as a supplement could also have like long-term negative side effects on your insulin sensitivity if you take it chronically. But other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure to click the like, subscribe, notification bell as well. My name is Seem. Stay optimized, stay empowered.